ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth, but we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity, until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house, opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous, clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. G'day, folks. This is Sim, and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. For those of you who's wondering where I've been, um, check out my channel update that should fill in um, some of the blanks but right now I'm back with this game and I think this is a very appropriate choice for my return to YouTube uh, we're not gonna muck about we're going to dive straight in and I'll explain it as we go along uh, darkest dungeon is a game that I've had for a while but when I got it on early access it wasn't feature complete and I decided I was going to wait until it was fully ready to play and that has happened the game is also released so you can get it on Steam now I would recommend you check it out uh, but let's give ourselves a save game and see where we go Now, this game is a throwback to a lot. Now, that is quite loud, and I may have You will arrive along the old it. road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion watch. through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. We hope. So, we're going to be starting off in the hamlet here. The mansion is up on the hill and it'll be a little while before we get there. But first we have to get to the hamlet itself. Now, as I was saying, this game borrows a lot um, from older games of the past, 
um, it's going to be a little bit slower than some um, but it's certainly going to be very very enthralling I believe so I'm just going to make some adjustments to the audio and I'll be right back so the stagecoach has struck a bit of bother and we're going to have to make the last part of the journey on foot let's take a moment to have a look at the interface and you can see here we have a map which shows the area that we're going to be exploring through uh, to get from here to here we're going to have to click on this particular room and each of these locations along the way has a chance of a random, in, random encounter. Um, we can also look at what materials that we have available to us at the moment. We can switch between our characters and we'll take note that we have a health bar here and just below this we also have a stress meter. Darkest Dungeon explores something very very different in gaming. Your heroes are not bulletproof. In fact, they are anything but bulletproof. The more they do, the more they adventure, the more horror that they see, the more it will affect them. And this game is as much about managing the sanity of your heroes as it is about defeating the monsters along the way. Your characters have various abilities. Um, they can be um, switched in position and the position that they're in in the party can have a big effect on the outcome of the battle. And let's move forwards and see exactly what we Brigands get. have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. Alright. Now we can use the keyboard to move as well. Um, or we can just continue with the mouse. We will do that for the time being. This marks our position on the map. All right. So let's move along and this dog in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. Yes, yes. We know how all of this works. So we've struck our first encounter, and it's a brigand. If we have a look at him here, we can see that he is a human. He has 12 hit points. Um, he has some protection, he has dodge and speed abilities, he also has resistances to various um, attacks, uh, as well as buffs and debuffs and all sorts of fun and games. Now, Dismas here currently has some abilities, and if we have a look, you'll see below the abilities we have some uh, indications. The indications are where they can be used from, and what rank they will strike. And at the moment we only have one guy, so he's in position one, which is equating to one of the red dots just below. And this melee attack has a small damage modifier, but it does have a chance to cause bleeding. This shot, on the other hand, uh, will affect up to three targets across a range. Um, and um, it also has a much greater damage modifier uh, and then finally we can change their position now we're not going to muck about we're going to go straight up with the um, the simple stuff at the beginning and we are going to make an attack which he resisted the bleed effect from now our friend here Reynold the Crusader um, if we have a look we have a standard attack smite we have a zealous accusation we have a stunning blow which has a chance to stun based upon his resistance which is 25%. Uh, we have a bulwark which is something that we cast on ourselves to give ourselves um, protection it would appear. Uh, and again we're not going to muck around we're just going to smack this figure. As the fiend falls, and down he goes. Hope blossoms. And we've picked up some gold. So thank you very much. Let's continue on. Okay, looks like a campsite or something coming up ahead. Now, simply being out, um, exploring is going to affect our stress, which will then affect our sanity. And one of the things that affects our stress is the amount of light. Um, so more light 
uh, helps to protect you against stress, but it also um, has some negative effects as well. In fact, as far as this game goes, pretty much everything that you do has consequences. So it's very much a case of balancing the bad against the worst. Let's keep moving forwards and see what happens. And we have found some curios. And we're going to have a look and see exactly what we've got here. And let's just close that. And let's see if it will allow us to interact. This is the brigands' tent, so we can have a look. Now, there is a possibility that this may be trapped. But we will see how we go. And Leave we have found unchecked. some gold. There is much to be found Thank you in very much. places. And we will continue on again, and now we've reached the end of this section, as you can see, and we can now move through the door. And Ambush. we have a chest. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Now, one thing we might want to take note of here, because it is important, this fella here is big. In fact, he is so big that he actually takes up two spaces in this particular party. So this guy is in position one, two. This guy is in position three. There is nobody in position four. It's important to take that into consideration when you're using your attacks. For example, this attack here will only work against this guy. The ranged grape shot blast should work against um, all of these guys. But there's still a lot about this game that I've got to learn. So this is where I take the opportunity to say, if you're familiar with this game, this is not a game that I've done a lot of heavy research on. So please feel free to tell me whatever you can down below in the comments and don't be afraid to call me a complete idiot if I do something really stupid. Alright, so as it stands, what are our options? We've got the grape shot. Uh, let's have a look at this guy first. He's highly resistant to stun. Um, looks like we have fairly good chances of hitting him with normal attacks. Um, he doesn't have much resistance to debuffs, so we'll take note of that. This fellow over here, he's a little weaker, but he obviously has a ranged attack. Uh, now, one of the things that we could do with this guy is pull him forward, if we have the ability, and that would shut down some of his ranged attack abilities, because a lot of ranged attacks um, have to be used at range. Um, so that's something to consider for the future. Right now, we've got an additional option of the pistol shot. Um, we've got the open vein, which is the straightforward attack. We will try the grape shot blast, and we should be targeting it, I believe, here. And we got a miss and a dodge, so that was a bit of a fail. On the other hand, he didn't. So now, this one here, I think, because this is going to be hopefully a reasonably easy fight, we'll experiment with the um, protection. So we're going to cast this on this guy. And now he has a protection buff. And he also took a bullet, which pushed him backwards. Lovely. And this guy got an attack in as well. Now, I am not sure yet exactly how it determines um, how many action points and various other bits and pieces you've got. Some of these guys' attacks have now been um, disabled because he can't use them from this rank. So we're going to have to go straight up with the open vein on this guy and hopefully cause a bleed. That was a good hit. And we got the bleed effect, so this guy is going to take damage over time. And so far we're doing a fairly good job of resisting. Now this guy is getting a bit of stress. That little horseshoe symbol that came up um, is an indication that his stress is increasing. So let's see what we can do from here. Now... 
considering all things, I'm just going to go straight up smacky smacky. And let's do that now. Good hit, good damage. This guy, unfortunately, is proving to be a problem. And unfortunately, this attack won't reach him over there. The tracking shot, on the other hand, will. So, let's take our chances. Let's see how we go. And that's buffed this guy along the way. Rain of Whips, again, small damage to both characters, but there's a bleed there now, and that's a bit of a bother. Alright, and... Stunning Blow, we can use that against this guy from this position, so let's... Oh, hang on a second, he's got a stun resistance, probably not a great idea, let's just... Oh, critical hit, beautiful. Okay, this guy's been moved forwards now, so some of his ranged attacks will shut down. Um, we are just going to go straight in with the open lane. And he's going to pull off a rush shot. And we are going to smack him dead. And we've got some Onyx and some Jade. And we'll take all of that. And we have completed the quest, which is essentially um, getting to town. So let's not muck about too much more. And we now have the option of returning to the Hamlet or continuing adventuring. Now, uh, you can actually quit a quest at pretty much any time as long as you're in a safe enough position as far as I'm aware. Uh, and sometimes it actually is the right choice not to continue fighting on but to run. Uh, in this case we're already there so there's not much more we can do. If we click on adventuring and we move forwards you'll notice that we can't actually access this chest. It would appear... Oh hang on there. Oh it's trapped. We can access that chest. Um, however... There's no guarantees that we're going to get away with this, but how could we not? Okay, Blight. Uh, not so cool. Um, he's going to take damage for three rounds, an additional six points. Um, and I do believe that that's about as far as we can go. So right now we have no real option except to exit. Uh, so we're just going to click on the quest complete icon. Let's see what we get out of this. Okay, a bunch of gold. No heirlooms, it would appear. We have gained some experience, and Dismas has picked up something. What would that be? A... Cove Explorer. He now gets a bonus, 20% scouting chance in Cove. Now Cove is one of the areas in the game, so we'll get to that soon enough. Alright, their resolve helps them to resist, and that will go up over time. So we are, like most D&D style games, um, able to level our characters up. And now, we've made it to town. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. So, let's have a look at what we've got to play here. Now, this is where I am really going to be flying blind. Uh, there's a lot that I'm going to have to learn and I'm probably going to have to do some research but I'm hoping I get some help from you guys and girls as well. This fella here is the caretaker and he's going to provide us with our quest goals. Um, we can see here at the moment our heroes are Reynold and Dismas um, and they're both currently level 1. Now we have Crusaders, we have High Women's. There are many different classes in the game and they all have certain advantages and disadvantages. Um, if we have a look here, we've got quite a list of goals to work our way through. Um, 
<laughs> and uh, we'll work on that uh, as we go along. For the time being, let's just close this and have a look at the town. And on any screen in the game, press and hold H to see contextual help for controls in that mode. While in town, exploring, fighting and camp. Tried in town while exploring, fighting, camping and more. So, alright, so if we're in town at the moment and we hold down H, whoops, we have to hold it down, it will tell us what we can do. We can right click on a hero in the roster um, to expect their character sheets. Um, we can click on the buildings and then we have a stage coach for new heroes, a blacksmith for upgrades, guild for upgrading, upgrading skills, um, a survivalist for upgrading camping skills, uh, tavern for stress relief, abbey for stress relief, sanitarium for treating quirks and diseases, and a nomad's wagon for purchasing rare items. So let's have a look here at what we've got. The blacksmith, the guild, the nomad wagon, currently it's locked, so is the guild, so is the blacksmith and the abbey, uh, in fact pretty much everything is locked. And we can also view ancestors memoirs. Let's have a quick look. In time you will know the tragic extent of my failings. And it looks like we can go here and we can watch all of the old cinematics once we've unlocked them. Alright, let's have a quick look at recruit new heroes. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. So, we need to recruit some heroes because we definitely want a full party before we go um, into the dungeon. Um, and obviously, from the looks of things, we've got what's effectively a, uh, a tank, a warrior, and a thief. Um, so, we are definitely going to be looking for some healing options. So, what have we got here? Uh, see if we can find out some information on these guys. Uh, drag and drop them into your roster, but how do we find out about them? Uh, let's turn this off and see. Ah, here we go. We have a Plague Doctor and a Vestal. If we right click on her, we can see her base stats. She uses a mace, so she's probably a cleric of some sorts. Um, she gets a penalty to her um, crit chance if she um, is below 50% hit points um, and she gets extra stress in ruins. Um, she prefers certain positions, uh, front line fighter and she prefers to hit front line fighters. She has a bash, she has a healing ability and she also has an illumination spell um, which looks like it um, gives a debuff to the dodge ability of your enemies um, and it gives a plus to the torch light in the area she also has hand of light which reduces damage now I'm not sure whether that reduces the damage that they take or the damage that they do um, and a lot of these things I'm just going to have to figure out over time or look up. She has some camping skills, so you can camp in the dungeons uh, and provided you've got the food you can regain some stress and some health um, and that's what the camping skills are. Various resistances um, and at the moment she has no diseases. Uh, let's have a look at the other guy this guy is a plague doctor alright he has a chance of causing blight with a ranged attack on the black back rank um, a melee attack uh, battlefield medicine um, alright and emboldening vapors alright now this guy already has some buffs 
he gets less damage to stress in the cove. Um, he gets a bonus if it's darker. Um, he uh, actually gets stressed if it's too bright. And he also loses speed if it's too bright. So I was saying earlier about the fact that uh, light levels can have an effect. And as with many things in this game, we're going to discover that there is going to be good and bad. Now this guy can reduce stress, heal in camp, uh, remove diseases. Now one of the interesting things about this is is that all of these different skills can be resisted. Even the healing can be resisted. You can have a character refuse to be healed, which um, is going to be interesting to say the least. As it stands for now, let's have a look and see exactly what we need to do here. We can upgrade the stagecoach and that will allow us to increase the number of available heroes and also increase the size of the roster of heroes that we can keep um, on hand. Now what it costs to upgrade I am not sure. We've got seven grand down here and we've got a whole bunch of things that we can pick up which I believe are the relics which are used to upgrade the buildings. So uh, at the moment I'm assuming we've got 10 of each and 20 of those. Ah, here we go. So to upgrade the stagecoach network, I need three and three. So I should be able to afford that now. Great heroes can be found even here in the mud and rain. Now I can't upgrade this uh, simply because uh, it's costing eight of the deeds and I only have seven. I could upgrade the barracks and increase the roster size, but at this stage of the game I don't think I need to worry about that, so we're not going to spend too much money that we don't need to spend. So, what we will do is drag the hero to the roster to recruit. I'm not sure what the cost is. Um, what better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? But we're going to grab both of these and a sister of battle, pious and unrelenting. Now, I really would prefer to have Dismas um, back a little bit further in the ranks. So let's see if we can swap him around and see whether this affects. Oi! Thank you. Uh, in fact, let's put him here and leave that plague doctor at the back. Alright, so we have our initial party and well we can view fallen heroes but we don't Most have any. We'll end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. I'm going to become very very fond of this guy doing the narration I'm sure. Let's have a look at what else we have down here. Um, yeah, stop nagging me. Alright, so that's the, um, the estate. This is our uh, inventory of trinkets, of which we don't seem to have much at all. Here we have a glossary which will tell us a little bit about the game's terms and I'm going to have to spend some time reading all of this because it's probably going to be very very important but we won't be doing that on camera and last but not least we have the options so where do we go from here well if we click on embark a mecca of madness and morbidity now, Your work begins. Now we can see the manor up the top and we have several areas that we can explore. The cove, uh, which is currently locked. The weald, which is locked. The warrens, which are also locked. So all that's available to us are the ruins. And we have a scout. Test yourself. Da -da 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 -da. 
Alright, so this is a short mission. There is a reward if we complete it of 3,000 gold, a crest, and a debuff stone, which I'll definitely have to look into. But, let's be real. We probably need to save the first adventure for the next episode. So, welcome to the Darkest Dungeon. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Until then, take care of each other everybody and ciao for now.